Thank you. Cool. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Knight. Uh, you can call me Pandy for short. I'm super thankful to be here today. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, I'm the Automation Panda. I'm currently a developer advocate at Apple Tools, and I also lead Test Automation University. So today, we're going to talk about visual testing. There are all kinds of testing. Unit testing, integration testing, end-to-end -end testing, web UI, REST API, mobile, load testing, performance testing, property-based testing, behavior-driven, data-driven, it's, it's buzzword bingo all over the place. You name it, there's a type of test for that. But at its core, what exactly is testing? In simplest terms, testing is interaction plus verification. That's it. You do something and you make sure it works. Every kind of testing reduces to this basic formula. Manual testing accomplishes both interactions and verifications by direct human interaction. Somebody needs to bang on a keyboard to drive the test. Automation though, drives interactions and verifications with a script. We like to think that automation is so great because it doesn't need any human intervention. But we all know that's not true. <laughs> Humans still need to write the tests, develop the scripts, and fix them when they break. Paradoxically, test automation isn't fully autonomous. Visual testing helps to change that. Although humans still need to figure out interactions, Visual testing techniques make verifications autonomous. Teams take snapshots of their views and look for changes over time. They catch more problems while ironically simplifying their test code. Unfortunately though, many folks seem to have the impression that visual testing is an advanced technique that requires a high level of testing maturity to be valuable. That's not the case at all. In fact, I want to flip the script entirely. Visual test automation is easier than traditional test automation. It isn't some bleeding edge technology that only fang companies can find useful or like those big companies like Google and Meta and all that. Um, it isn't out of reach for teams just starting their automation journey. Visual testing makes functional testing easier and stronger. It's something teams should do first before attempting to automate longer, more complicated tests with your traditional testing techniques. These are, these are big claims, right? So let's see what I mean. Today, we're going to automate a web test together in Java with Selenium WebDriver using traditional interactions and verifications. Then we will supercharge it with visual testing techniques using Apple tools. I chose Java and Selenium WebDriver because those are seemingly like the most popular tool for browser automation, as well as one of the most popular languages. Um, but note, you can, you can do visual testing in any programming language, like C Sharp, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and with different tools, like let's say Cypress or Playwright or Puppeteer. So let's dig in. First, we need a web app to test. We could test any app of any size, but I'm going to choose a small one for the sake of our demo. This is Apple Tools demo site. <laughs> it mimics a banking application. You can try it yourself at demo.appletools.com. The login page has a main icon, username and password fields, and a sign-in button. Since this is a demo site, you can enter any username or password to log in. After clicking the sign-in button, the main page loads. There's lots of stuff on the main page. The top bar has a name of the app, search field, and icons for your account. The main part of the page shows financial data. The left sidebar 
shows different account types. We could write a basic login test for this app in four steps. Load the login page, verify that the login page loads correctly, log into the app, and verify the main page loads correctly. This could be like a smoke test. There's nothing fancy here. The trickiest part for automation would be deciding which elements to check on the loaded pages. We could automate this test in Java using Selenium WebDriver, like I said before. Technically, we could automate it using any popular language or tool. Um, personally, myself, right now, I really like Python with Playwright. But you know, based on different reports I've seen, Java is still kind of kingpin, and Selenium is still the most popular tool people use. Uh, in Java, we can write a JUnit test class named login test and create a test case method named login. This test case method here calls four helper methods, one for each step. The first method, load login page, loads the demo app's login page in the browser. The second method, verify login page, verifies the appearance of five critical elements on the page, the logo, username field, password field, sign-in button, and the remember me checkbox. It waits for each of these elements to appear using a helper method named wait for appearance. The third method, perform login, enters a username and password, and then clicks the sign-in button. So far, so good. Nothing too bad. The fourth method, verify main page, is quite a doozy. Remember all the things on that main page? Well, they're going to need several assertions to verify. Some assertions merely check the appearance of elements, while others need to perform text matching. For example, to check the banner at the top that says your nearest branch closes in X minutes, we need to find the element, get its text, and then perform a regular expression match. Checking the account types and status fields require getting lists of elements, mapping their text values, and transforming the resulting data for comparisons. Despite this heavy lifting, the page still doesn't check everything on the main page. Data, amounts, and descriptions are all ignored as a risk-based trade-off. We could add more assertions, but they would lengthen this method even more. They could also be difficult to write and become brittle over time. Tests just can't cover everything. If we run this login test against our web app, it should pass without a problem. But what if this page changes? Here's a different version of the same page with some slight visual differences. Can you see what they are? Let me go back and forth a few times for you to see. So will our login test still work? Will it pass or fail? And should it pass or fail? Looking at these two pages side by side makes comparison easier. The logos are different and the sign-in buttons are different. While I'd probably ask the developers about the sign-in button change, I categorically consider the logo change to be a bug. Unfortunately, as long as the page structure doesn't change, our login test will still pass. It wouldn't detect these visual changes. We probably wouldn't find out about these changes if we rely exclusively on traditional test automation. The step to verify that the login page loaded correctly only checks for the appearance of those five elements by locators. These assertions will pass as long as these locators find elements somewhere on the page, regardless of where they appear or what they look like. Technically, even this login page would still pass the test even though we can clearly see it's broken. Traditional functional testing hinges on the most basic functionality of web pages. If it clicks, it works. <laughs> it completely misses visuals. Those are huge test gaps. Adding more assertions probably wouldn't catch this kind of problem either. 
So what if we could in visually inspect the page? That would easily catch any problems on the page. We could take a baseline snapshot that we consider good. And every time we run our tests, we take a new checkpoint snapshot. Then we can compare the two side by side to detect any changes. This is what we call visual testing. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then a snapshot is worth a thousand assertions. Automated visual testing is what Apple Tools does. One visual snapshot captures everything on the page. As a tester, you don't need to explicitly state what to check. Snapshot implicitly covers layout, color, size, shape, and styling. That's a huge advantage over traditional test automation. To be honest, testers have been doing visual testing since computers first had screens. Anyone can manually bang on a keyboard and look at a screen to see what changes. It's arguably the first kind of testing anyone ever does. It's super valuable to take a quick glance at a page to see what's wrong. Humans can intuitively judge if a page is good or bad in a few seconds. Unfortunately, human reviews don't scale well. Modern apps have several screens worth checking, and continuous integration systems deploy changes multiple times a day. Not every tester can be like John Henry. In the United States where I live, we have a legend of a uh, old railroad worker named John Henry. As the legend goes, he worked on the railroad along the Great Bend Tunnel on the CNO Railway, somewhere in like Maryland, West Virginia area. Uh, not too far from where I grew up, actually. When the railroad company bought a steam drill, John Henry competed against it head to head with a 10 pound hammer in each hand. He drilled much deeper than the steam engine could, but he died from exhaustion afterwards. Humans can't scale <laughs> as much as automation or machines can. To be relevant in a modern software shop, visual testing really needs to be automated too. But that's easier said than done. Programming a tool to capture screenshots and perform pixel to pixel comparisons isn't too difficult. But determining if those changes actually matter is difficult. A good visual testing tool should ignore changes that don't matter, like small padding differences, and focus on changes that do matter. Otherwise, human testers would need to review every single result, nullifying any benefit of automated visual testing. So take a look at these two pictures. They show a cute little underwater octopus garden. Take a look and see how many differences you can find between them. I'll give you a few seconds to look. If you think you found them all, pop them in the chat and tell us how many you found. All right, I see some activity in the chat. So, uh, five, seven, eight, six, six, eight. Okay, okay. Good tries, good tries. So hold on to your number for just a second. Um, I want to show you what happens if you did a pure pixel to pixel comparison. A pixel to pixel comparison won't find any of the differences. I ran these two pictures through Apple tools using that exact pixel to pixel comparison. And this is what happened. Except for the white spaces on each side, every pixel was different because it was shifted. As humans, we can clearly see that these images are very similar. But because they had a few pixel difference, automation failed to pinpoint any meaningful differences. So <laughs> let's see what happens with a better visual check. This is where AI really helps. AppTools uses visual AI to detect meaningful changes that humans would see and ignore inconsequential differences that just make noise. Here, I use the strict comparison, which is detecting things like human eyes detect. And it pinpointed 10 differences. Take a look. 
Were you able to find all 10 yourself? I think the highest anyone in the chat said was, was eight. Um, do you see any that you missed? Take a moment and, and check around. That's the second advantage of good automated visual testing. Visual AI focuses on meaningful differences to avoid noise. Visual test results shouldn't waste testers' time over small pixel shifts or things a human eye wouldn't notice. They should highlight what matters, like missing elements, different colors, skewed layouts. Visual AI is a differentiator for automated visual testing. Um, when you compare different visual testing tools, um, look for ones that do this kind of checking and not just raw pixel to pixel comparison. So let's update our login test to do visual testing with Apple Tools. Uh, first, you will need an Apple Tools account. Anyone can create one for free. Uh, just go to the link that I'm showing here. Uh, you can use your GitHub account or an email and you, you don't need to pay anything. It's completely free. Once you do create your account, they'll send you an API key that you will need to set as an environment variable for testing. Next, we'll need to add the Apple Tools Eyes SDK to our project. Since we're using Selenium WebDriver with Java, we're going to need to add the COM Apple Tools Eyes Selenium Java 3 Maven dependency to our Java's project's POM XML file. Uh, I'm using Maven, Maven project structure. Then we need to set up visual testing objects in a test setup method. Uh, we can pop this right into JUnit. We'll still need to use that web driver object we had before, but we also need a visual grid runner to upload snapshots to the Apple Tools UltraFast test cloud. And we need an eyes object to take visual snapshots during test execution. The configuration object sets the API key, the test batch name, and the browsers that we want to test. Here, I'm just using Chrome, but we can do others as well. The step for our login tests are the same, but before and after the test steps, we must open and close Apple Tools eyes so we can take that snapshot during the test. Opening requires the web driver reference, the app name, and the test name. That'll be used for logging. The interaction methods can remain unchanged, you know, entering username, password, clicking that login button. But we need to update the verification methods. Traditional assertions can be completely replaced by one-line snapshot calls. Take a look at load login page. Five lines reduced to one. And the visual snapshot technically has far greater coverage. <laughs> That's the ironic thing. Less code, more coverage. The impact on the verify main page step is far greater. One visual snapshot eliminates the need for several of those lines of assertions. This is the third major advantage visual testing has over traditional functional testing. Visual snapshots greatly simplify assertions. Instead of spending hours deciding what to check, figuring out locators, writing transformation logic, you can make one concise snapshot call and be done. You know, as an engineer myself, I cannot understate the cognitive load this removes from the automation coding process. I said it before, I'll say it again. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then a snapshot is worth a thousand assertions. Boom. <laughs> so let's see visual testing in action. It's time to dive into some code. So I have a GitHub repository here that has all the example code I've showed today. You can also get to it from this QR code if you like. You know, snap that. It just goes to the save URL. So what I want to do is I want to show you that project. And I want to actually run these visual tests so you can see the differences it catches for yourselves. So let's give that a try. So here on the screen, I have that GitHub repository. Uh, as I said before, it's got everything inside. I've got a readme that explains how to set everything up. 
And if we were to go into the test code, um, you'll see that I have two JUnit test classes, traditional test and visual test. Um, it's just the example code we saw before. So let's just take a quick look at the visual test. Um, as we saw before, there's you know a bunch of um, imports. We have the web driver object, that runner for the grid, as well as the, the eyes that captures the snapshots. Um, so we, we set some things up here. And um, here I actually have multiple browser configurations that you can see. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the code is pretty concise. I've got our my test steps, you know, the four steps, opening and closing eyes around it. And then the, the actual implementations of the steps are, are very, very concise here. So we can, we can run this and we can see what happens. Now I am, where is my code? One moment, please. Ah, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna open IntelliJ here. <laughs> So I have the code in IntelliJ IDEA, and I am going to run our visual test. So you can, you can run these locally on your machine. Uh, you can run them as you're debugging, or if you want to have manual triggers for them, OK. And so boom. Oh, shoot. Chrome driver only supports version 98. Crap. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Hold on, we can fix this real quick. I need to update my Chrome driver version. What version of Chrome do I have? Settings, about group. Okay. Oh, I got version 99. Okay. Sorry, I had tested this by a different way. <laughs> Please bear with me. Oh, so embarrassing. I'm supposed to know what I'm doing, and here I am totally, totally screwing things up. Uh, gosh, I did run the test before the webinar, but it'll just take a moment to fix here. Uh, okay. On another screen here, I'm just copying it over real quick. Sorry, sorry. I'm I'm downloading it. I just need to move it. This is this is Selenium web driver. You've got to have like Chrome driver, Firefox, or Gecko driver, whatever it's called. Or else it doesn't work. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Uh, show. Sure. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's try this one more time, folks. <laughs> I know that was horribly unimpressive. Okay, there we go. Started successfully, now it should be running. Um, you'll see that the test pops up real quick on the screen here. It's going, it's doing its business. Boom, it's done. So we ran the test once locally. And now what it's gonna do is it's going to capture all those visual snapshots and upload them to Apple Tools so you can actually see the diffs. Um, Again, sorry, sorry for that little hitch. <laughs> if I go to the Apple Tools dashboard, uh, we can see, um, you know, I have my account, I logged in. You can see how all these results, oh shoot, that's okay, that's okay. Um, we can see it's populating all these different results. Uh, this is not quite what I want, that's okay, that's okay. So it takes a few minutes to, to grind through everything. Um, now you might be wondering, where did all these results come from? If we look in the code, um, we actually have multiple different configurations. 
for browsers and stuff. So um, that's why we have uh, a bunch of different results here because we had all those different configurations we're running against. Locally, we only ran against Chrome one time, but we've got this, these multiples in the cloud. Um, actually, let me, let me simplify this real quick. Um, sorry, folks. <laughs> I only wanted to run one. Let me edit the code here real quick. Let's let's keep things simple and only have one configuration for now. Oops. All right, so let's try that again. This should go a little bit faster. Okay. Boom boom. All right, so now if we look at our test results, here we go, okay. So we, one visual test this time. Uh, we can see how it's running and if we refresh, should be passed, okay. So in our visual test, we took two snapshots. We have the login page snapshot and we have the main page snapshot. Since this was the first time we ran this test, um, it has a status of new, meaning it's establishing new baselines. These images become the baseline image against everything in the future we'll be checked. So if we were to run the test a second time, again, just this one configuration to keep it simple. I'll run it again. Again, the browser does its thing. Back to the dashboard, if we refresh, you can see there's a new batch because there was a second run. And in this one, while it's cranking through, okay, uh, we can see this one is marked as passing because there were no visual changes. And so if I compare baseline to the, the checkpoint, you can see they're side by side, they're identical, right? So Apple tools knows, okay, no difference is detected. Boom, this test is passing. Okay, but if we changed something on the site and ran the test, then our visual checkpoint should fail. Uh, as you recall, there were those two versions of the login page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the visual test, but I'm going to have it target that different URL, which means it'll load a different page. And so we should see a failure. Let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm running it again. And Chrome is loading. Give it a moment. <laughs> Sometimes Selenium can be slow. Okay, and we can see that was the alternative page. And if we check what the visual result looks like this time, it's running, it's running. Give it just a moment. Ah, so now this time, instead of saying passing, it says unresolved, meaning, oh, we've detected a visual difference. If we do the side-by-side -side comparison, the highlighting shows us exactly where those visual differences are. So the icon was different, the um, sign-in button and the remember me click were different. So, ooh, this is, this is not good. <laughs> so if, when I look at this, I think, oh gosh, yes, that's a broken image. This is a failure. Thumbs down on that. And when we thumbs down and we save, that marks this result as a failure. So now anytime that the test runs again and it sees this kind of issue, it's automatically going to mark the test as failed. And it keeps the old baseline going. Um, alternatively, if we had seen this as a good change, we could give it a thumbs up and that checkpoint becomes the new baseline. So in this case, um, we've marked it as failed. If I go back and I run this on the original version of the site, 
you know, that, that first version of the page and run it again, then the test should pass again because it no longer has that issue. So we'll do that one more time just so you can see it. And once again, we see a batch coming in. It's the visual login test we had before. And it should be targeting that original version of the site. And it's passing again because the the uh, visual view, <laughs> visual view the front page view is back to what it was originally therefore it's matching the baseline so this is awesome yay cool now this test we ran one time using Chrome um, but as I blundered before and you you saw a sneak peek. You can actually run these visual checkpoints against multiple different browsers. And the reason you can do that is because when, when this type of visual testing is done, Apple Tools Eyes is capturing snapshots, not screenshots. And that is a huge, huge difference. Um, a screenshot is literally like a copy paste image of all the pixels on that view on that page. Um, once you have that pixelated screenshot, you can't do anything with it. It's stuck in that frame. Whereas a snapshot is a full capture of the page. It contains the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, everything that goes on in the DOM, document object model. So when you have a snapshot that you capture, not only can you render that in the current browser, but you can re-render that snapshot in any browser configuration you want. So even though locally on my machine, I only run the test one time on Chrome, when I upload that snapshot to the Apple Tools UltraFast test cloud, it can re-render that under any browser configuration you want. You want Firefox, you want IE, you want Safari, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, and so what this lets you do is it lets you effectively do cross-browser testing at high scale very, very rapidly. You run once, you re-render a hundred times. It doesn't matter. Um, this is also a cool way that you can run your tests on, on uh, browsers and machines that are not supported on your local setup or with your um, test framework. You know, for example, uh, if you're running on a Windows machine, you can't directly test Safari, but you could run your test and upload it to UltraFast Test Cloud and, and it and it can re-render your snapshots on Safari. Or another thing, uh, for example, let's say Cypress. Uh, if, if we were using Cypress instead of Selenium WebDriver, uh, Cypress uh, does not work on other browsers like Safari and Internet Explorer. You can still run your Cypress tests you know, using Chrome, capture the snapshots, and re-render those snapshots in Apple Tools Cloud on Safari and IE and still be good to go. So let's go back and see those browser configurations in detail. So I'll uncomment them and uh, maybe increase the size. There we go. So here I actually have five browser configurations. I have five different desktop browsers, uh, Chrome, Firefox, IE, Edge, and Safari. And not only are they different browsers, but I also have them as different viewports. Uh, viewports are almost as important as browsers. I would even say just as important because when in modern web app design, your screen size dictates layout choices, right? If you have a responsive web app, when the screen shrinks, the layout changes. And when it grows, it changes. Furthermore, we also have five mobile device browsers. Um, so here we've got different devices which dictate viewport size. So things like iPhone, Pixel, Galaxy, and even a tablet, an iPad Pro. And you can set the screen orientation. Whoops. Oh, gosh. Sorry about that. You can say if you want to test in portrait mode or landscape mode. So with these five, um, I'm going to run the test again, and we'll, we'll see the results that happen. On our local machine, it's only going to run the test one time. 
I have it set with Chrome driver, so it's going to run with Chrome. Boom, it's done. So then when I go to the uh, dashboard, we'll see the batch is running. And there should be a total of 10 tests here, ultimately. Um, I, my The way I have this set up is I actually have it set with a concurrency of five. So in the test cloud, it's actually running five um, snapshot checkpoints at a time. Uh, more more um, higher concurrency means more tests at the same time, meaning shorter total execution time. So we can see they're all pi piling in. And so, um, you know, one of them, it's the same viewport and snapshot and everything. So that's the same. But all these other snapshots, they're new. So they're setting baselines. And yep, so all of them passed because nine out of 10 were new. I could run this test again and it would populate them all as passing. But I want to draw your attention to the total amount of time it took. You know, I had 10 visual functional tests, each with two snapshots, and it took a total of 44 seconds. Um, with traditional web UI testing, if you're using a traditional cross-browser tool, either you built your own Selenium grid, or maybe you use something from one of the vendors, like, you know, browser stack, for example, or Sauce Labs and all that. Um, every browser configuration you want to hit requires you to rerun the test. And so that adds up to your total execution time very, very quickly. Um, 10 tests on a platform like one of those, you know, a single test might take, you know, 10 or no, no, like a minute, maybe two minutes. Uh, they tend to be a bit slower in the cloud. And so now um, 10 tests, you know, 10 to 20 minutes just for those tests. If you're not parallelizing, that time becomes very slow. Here with, with the way we are approaching our testing, you know, pairing functional testing with visual testing techniques and then re-rendering these snapshots, we can do that very quickly. And so the total execution time is much, much lower than a more traditional approach, which is really, really cool. So all that to say, that's a big advantage. Uh, lightning fast cross-browser testing is visual testing's fourth big advantage. Uh, to do cross-browser testing with traditional functional tests, you've got to run each test on each browser configuration all the way through. But with visual snapshots, each test can run only once, and those snapshots are re-rendered on each target configuration, making your test faster and more reliable because it's a one-time upload. So before I conclude this talk, there is one more thing I want you all to consider, and that is when a team should adopt visual testing. I, you know, I'm developer advocate at Apple Tools, so like it's it's kind of my gig to talk about visual testing and all this. And you know, I my stance is I'm an engineer. I care about good testing, and I want to help people. You know, I see value in this as part of a broader test strategy. Um, you can really help out your functional testing with this technique. Um, but I can't tell you how many times folks have told me, Andy, that visual testing thing looks really cool, and it looks really helpful but I don't think my team can ever get there. We're just getting started. We're new to automation and automation is hard. I don't think we'll ever be mature enough to use a, a visual testing tool like this. And I'm like, oh gosh, I smack myself in the forehead. And it's because visual testing actually makes it easier to do automation, right? It's not some high amount and you have to climb it eventually you get there. If you do it from the start, it's actually going to make your life a lot easier. Um, I really think that teams should incorporate visual testing as part of their strategy from the beginning. Um, consider this. Um, let's say you're, you're new to a team or your, your team is new to testing automation. You're just getting started. Um, you can start by automating a smoke test. That all it does, navigates to different pages, captures snapshots of each page. That's it. <laughs> just navigate, capture, navigate, capture. Um, your interaction code would be very straightforward. You know, go to this URL or click this button and wait. And your snapshots are one-liners. So your, your test automation is going to be pretty simple. You can do it in any language, any tool, 
right? You just slap on the Apple Tools Eyes package or whatever, and your tests are going to be pretty short. Um, but even though that smoke suite is very simple, it's providing an immense amount of value because you're every time you run that test suite, hopefully in some sort of continuous integration system, you know, it's doing some basic things, but it's capturing those views and it's constantly checking, hey, you know, did you break anything? <laughs> and so you're getting a lot of value for just a little bit of work. It's kind of like the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of the value for 20% of the work. Um, get started with that. Then later, when your team has more time and more maturity, then you can expand your automation project with larger tests that use both traditional as well as visual assertions. And you can, you can expand from there. You still have your smoke suite of visual stuff, but then maybe later you can come back and add you know, end-to-end -end tests that you know, test workflows through your application. And, and even when those are more complex tests, you can still use the visual snapshots as part of the assertions that you're, you're um, employing. The visual and traditional assertions can work hand in hand. Uh, <clears throat> test automation is hard no matter what tool or language you use. Teams struggle to automate tests in time and to keep them running. Uh, visual testing simplifies implementation and execution while catching more problems. It offers the advantage of making functional testing easier. It's not only a technique for those on the bleeding edge or working at the, the, the big name companies. Um, it's something that is here today and it's accessible to anyone doing test automation. I believe visual testing really is a winning strategy. It has several advantages over traditional functional testing. Um, please note though, visual testing does not replace functional testing. Instead, it supercharges it. It's a functional testing technique. <laughs> uh, with a tool like Apple Tools Eyes, you can do visual testing in any major language or test framework you like. And with the ultra-fast grid, you can do visual testing using any major browser configuration as well. Uh, like I said before, if you want to give this a try, you can sign up for a free account. You can clone the example project that I shared before, and you can get tests running on your own. So thank you all again for attending my talk today on visual testing. Uh, again, my name is Pandy, uh, Andy Knight. I am the Automation Panda. I am a developer advocate at Apple Tools. I love testing. I champion high quality. Uh, I also run Test Automation University. Uh, be sure to read my blog and follow me on Twitter at Automation Panda. Um, hit me up anytime. I'd love to chat more. Um, if you don't know about Test Automation University, go check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> right now, we have about 70 courses on all sorts of testing and automation topics from some of the best instructors in the world. Um, and the best part, every single course is free and always will be. Um, also, I just want to say right now, I know QA Group is based in Ukraine. I'm guessing many of you are in Ukraine right now. Um, I've got a ton of respect for Ukraine and y'all right now. Um, the fact that you are hosting this webinar in the middle of a war is incredible resilience. Um, and your resistance to tyranny is really admirable. So I feel so honored to be able to speak to you at this event on something that I'm passionate about. Slava Ukraini. And so with that, that is my talk. And if anybody has any questions in the chat, I'd be more than happy to answer. So let's see, um, one question here. Did you use Percy? Could you please add a couple of advantages of using Apple tools instead of Percy? Um, so personally, I have not used Percy hands-on. Um, but I know a little bit about Percy. I know they're an alternative type of uh, visual testing tool. And in fact, there are other visual testing tools out there. There's Apple Tools, there's Percy. I think there's one with like an elephant logo. There, there's, there's a couple out there. Um, the one thing that makes Apple Tools different from every other tool I've seen, including Percy, is the visual AI aspect. Um, many of the other... Um, screen or uh, many of those other tools, they're just doing pixel by pixel comparisons, 
right? So remember that octopus garden image we showed? If you have some shifting, like some of them now are better about the shifting a little bit, but if, if you have any sort of skew or whatever, it really invalidates the whole capture and check. And so you, your, your results become noisy. And I've actually talked to some people who have used tools like Percy and come to me and be like, Andy, this Percy thing is, is just giving my team a headache because we always have to go in there and like, you know, give thumbs up or thumbs down on results because it can't figure things out on its own. Um, whereas the what Apple tools does is a visual AI approach. It's um, looking for things that a, a human would notice. So zeroing in on those critical differences to say, hey, these are the differences that would that would that a human user would notice. These are the ones that are going to be problematic for you. And so um, with that, it takes that burden off of you as the human tester to come in and go thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, some other cool things that visual AI does, not only does it do you check for comparisons and all, but something I didn't show is that um, when you have, let's say, multiple different uh, visual snapshots that you're comparing at one time, as soon as you mark one as thumbs up or thumbs down, uh, Apple Tools has kind of like a, a batch job in the background that will then go look at all the other results and see which ones are similar to the one you just marked thumbs up or thumbs down. And if it sees, oh, there's a similarity here, it'll automatically mark those as well. So you don't have this burden of click, click, click through everything. So there's, there's little things like that that really make Apple Tools a, a much better kind of visual testing tool. All right, uh, I see another question here in the chat. Uh, how to manage some smaller changes in application design? For example, some minor changes is logo change. Ah, that's a great question. Um, because let's, let's say you, know, you have a logo in your application somewhere, or like on the pages, and you change that logo, and all of a sudden, all of your pages now have visual differences, right? Um, yeah, it happens. <laughs> there are some strategies you can have to mitigate that. Um, for, the first thing I mentioned was that thing where Apple Tools runs in the background and kind of checks other tests or other snapshots for you. That will help. So it's, if you instead of having to click like 300 pages, you click it once or twice and it figures out the rest. Um, other things you can do. Um, you don't need to always take a snapshot of a full page. Oops, sorry, of a full page. You can actually take snapshots of pieces of pages of individual elements or sections or regions or components. Like if your web app is made up of components, um, you can capture smaller bits. And so just like you, know, you would have unit integration end to end tests, you can kind of do that type of breakdown uh, with visual testing as well. You know, maybe you only want to, um, let's say you have like a header and a sidebar that appear on every page, but they don't really change. Maybe when you go about taking your snapshots, you just take snapshots of the main body and ignore the others. And so that can help mitigate you know, some of those noisier things. Um, or um, another example I can give specifically with components. I know a lot of um, front end web development projects use a component library, so they don't have to keep you know, coding up elements and putting them everywhere. Um, if you use Storybook um, as your visual component builder, Apple Tools actually has a package that plugs right in and will just automatically test all your storybook components. So you can, you can do interesting things like that as well. <clears throat> so yeah, little, little changes you can, you can help to mitigate um, some of the, the stress of having to like go in and manage results. Um, I guess that's another point I should mention as well. Uh, another thing people kind of bring up to me, and this is actually something I was concerned about at first with visual testing, is the, the burden of review. Right, you know, oh, I have to go in and like look at my snapshots. I thought this was supposed to be automated, but now I have manual intervention. No matter what type of automated testing you do, when it's done, a human needs to go look at results. It doesn't matter if it's a traditional functional test, if it's a performance test, it's a unit integration or end-to-end -end level, it doesn't matter, right? The test run, it gives feedback, human needs to look at the reports. Visual testing is no different. It's just instead of looking at like a log or an HTML file or something, you're looking at these visual diffs, right? And a good visual testing tool is one that only forces you to look at visual diffs when it really needs your input. 
and not just throwing noise up in your face. So, all righty, let's see if we've got any others in the chat. Oh, I see lots of thank yous. Thank you. I mean, this, this is, like I said, it's quite an honor to be speaking with y'all. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, I see one more question in the chat, how to get pricing for a paid subscription of Apple tools. Ah, great question. Um, what I would say is first register for that free account and start playing around. And if you are interested in, in leveling up, you know, to a paid subscription, then you can, you can reach out to uh, Apple tools, sales folks. Um, if sales folks intimidate you, I understand. I'm not a sales folk. I'm an engineer. I'm technically a developer advocate. You can come talk to me and I can get you in front of the right people. Um, I don't know much about pricing or how they do the things. That's not my world, but I, I'd be more than happy to introduce you to help you get started. If you have any questions, even on a free account, like if you have any questions about general visual testing or general testing practices or like, hey, I can't get this one thing working right, let, let me know. Automation Panda on Twitter, automationpanda.com has a, a contact form. More than happy to, to help you all. Cool, cool. Uh, are there any other questions, any other thoughts, comments? Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So uh, you said that uh, slow Kriini and uh, I answer uh, Hero and Slow. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, support, um, Ukrainians, Ukraine, and um, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to wear my, my blue and gold today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. Great. So thank, thank you, so you everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Keep in touch. <laughs>